What's up, Giles here from Giles FBA, and I'm with the big Mike. What's up, guys? And we're back with a podcast. Uh, we've been, I mean, we did a podcast about a month ago, but we're going to get back on the bi-weekly schedule podcast. So, uh, yeah, we need guests. Um, if you think you'd be a good guest, uh, DM me on like Twitter or Discord or something. And uh, yeah, we could probably set that up. So um, today we're going to be talking about a Q4 recap. Um, so talking about some products we sold, products we did well with, products we didn't do so well with, um, lessons learned, and all that good stuff. So, yeah. And my, just what, what came to mind was my first big lesson on uh, something I could have capitalized on more in Q4 was like loading up on the pre-Black Friday sales, so... Um, obviously, everyone was sourcing Black Friday sales across Target, Walmart, all that. But that those listings could have done better. Granted, they were decent, but the uh, like the week before that was really the time to like capitalize on grabbing everything that looked good, FBM and quick, and then sort of veering away from the rest of Black Friday sales. Obviously, like. We couldn't pass on the $350 PS5, but, uh, you know, a few other things, video games especially, um, are still barely recovering from those half retail price sales um, where Amazon had infinite stock, matched Target, matched Best Buy, all the, all the big retailers to stay competitive. And then uh, I know a few I'm on are slowly recovering back to like 55 bucks which is still 10 to 15% return, but um, yeah, if you can't can't afford to hold out on stuff like that, then it's best just to just stay away from it. I I know with the video games I bought, I did well on every single one of them. Uh, granted, I only bought 50 to 75 units each of them, all off of Target and a few off of Walmart. Um, I have some down here. Uh, it takes two, whatever that is. Five Nights oh, yeah. at Freddy, uh, MLB The Show, WWE, and uh, I, I can't read my own handwriting, but per- Persona Five Royal. Yeah, Persona Five. Um, those were Switch. the video games I bought, and I did well on all of those. Uh, probably making twenty five percent or more, uh, and then cash back on top of that. Um, like I said, though, I didn't go too deep on them. Uh, I probably bought 50 units of each of them. Yeah, I know uh, It Takes Two is actually still doing very well. It's like out of stock online everywhere. Uh, really? Pick up on Walmart, I believe, is 15 to 20 bucks, and that's, uh, it's still moving for over 40. But that's yeah. Awesome. Um, Just one example. I, I, I like the video games, though. Next year, I'll probably go deeper on... Video games I think will do well. Um, I didn't get hit with too many returns either with video right, games. Yeah, me either. I was like... kind of expecting to get hit with big returns. I probably saw out of, I don't know, three, 400 units, maybe 10, 15 returns, right. which I thought was super impressive. It's definitely sub 5% return rate. Even, I mean, we got. 12 days left until the end of the return period. So, unless, you know, half of the people return in that amount of time, should be chilling, but... All right. Um, let's talk about the buy two, get one free uh, Taylor Swift finals, which are insane. Um, and I should have gone way deeper on, yeah. Don't remind yeah. me. Yeah. Um, so, Target was running a buy two, get one free... Um, vinyl section off thing, and uh, a lot of Taylor's vinyls were in there. So we found uh, lovers and then folklores were the most profitable. And there's another one that was like kind of on the fence that we could have cooked. Tangerine. Um. Well, was was that what it was? Yeah, I got uh, I got like nine. I should have gone deeper on those two, but so you did well on those. Yeah, I mean it was at the time it was fifty sales a month. It was great ROI. Um. Yeah. Well, it was decent, and then. It obviously also went out of stock along with the others, and right. well, at least I don't think Folklore ever did, but along with Lover, and then ended up hitting like um, in the mid to high fifties, and I think I paid twenty six ish a piece. All right, 
So yeah, they did well, but uh, volume definitely picked up. Like it was like twenty fold. So when I went back to the listing, it, it sold like a thousand times in the last month. Um, in December. That's crazy. I looked at it. The volume picked up. Yeah, it's it's ridiculous. Like we saw Lover was. Two to three K probably and yeah, it was, t- was two thousand two thousand whenever the buy two uh get one free yeah. came out. And then by the end of December it was up to eight ten thousand a month. I think it, 10, it, hit, I think it hit nine or ten as of uh like early January since that entailed all of December. Right. And like the um, past month per se. Yeah, so to put this in perspective, I have some like numbers down. Uh I was uh, essentially after 5% re- uh, rent card and then buy two, get one free. I was getting them for around 19 each. And then with my prep fee, I was basically around 20 bucks a uh, unit. Um, they're selling at the beget like probably end of November for $45 plus. And then probably second week of December, it got up to 62, 63, 64 dollars so we were making at 45 dollars a sell price of 45 dollars i was making 10 dollars a unit at um 65 i would obviously be making 30 dollars a unit um i only got 150 of those starting off obviously should have got gotten way more um but the seller amp was kind of messed up on it and only said it said like greater than greater than like sales 79 yeah and then keep us at 2000 sales a month and obviously, I saw the Keepa chart. I'm like, yeah, these are selling. I'm, I'm just not really sure if they're selling 2,000 times a month. Well, they were selling 2,000 times a month. And then uh, that sale ended, and I started, I started, uh, I, I got up to 600 of them um, even after the buy to get one free ended. Um, and I just checked my stats on seller board, and I ended with, or I still have some in stock. I still have like 50 some in stock, but. Um, I'm at 5,500 in profit on 550 units. So essentially it all worked out to making $10 a unit. Um, but yeah, if, if I would have off the rip bought 600, but the buy, buy to get one free, I mean, I, I could have took that 5,500 into legit probably like $9,000, $10,000 profit on one SKU, which yeah. is insane. I actually didn't even, I don't even think I got any on the, the sale. If so, it was like 10 to 20. It was very minimal. But um, I did get 240, yeah, 249, like 250 basically um, at a 25% return. I FBM'd a lot. I FBA'd the others um, and made just shy of two grand on 250 units. So, you know, not $10 a unit, but pretty darn close. It was like 850 around there. Right. Um, yeah. And yeah, I mean, if, <laughs> you can do that with four products there's your eight grand a month profit it's ridiculous stuff like this i mean i I would obviously on this but it still right performed extremely well because of the volume right um and obviously it's november december things are going to sell at much higher rate much higher volume um as we saw it jump from two thousand to ten thousand sales a month um, same with the folklore. I ended up getting 150 with the buy two get one free. Uh, buy cost was lower. It was around uh, 16 bucks, and after prep, 17 bucks. Um, it at at the beginning when this was happening, I believe it was 300 sales a month, 400 sales a month on Keepa. Um, I ended up selling out. Like it jumped up to like 2,000 sales a month end of end of December. Um. They were selling for $40, $40 plus. I think I sold all of mine for like $46 to $48. Um, I didn't pull that one up on my seller board, but I did extremely well on those as well. Um, it didn't make sense to re... Uh, what am I trying to say? Uh, go back and buy. Yeah, yeah, replan um, on Target at the normal retail price of I think it was 25 or 30 um, after. Um, it's still it's still a little uh, shy, twenty five percent actually. Yeah, it, it's not bad. Um, I mean, I was just focused on the lovers, I guess. Yeah, uh, yeah. The, these also went in and out of stock, uh, middle of December on Target as well. So, but yeah, those are the two vinyls I hit really hard this year, and I'm gonna double, triple, quadruple down on vinyls if they do some sort of deal like that again next year 
Um, and spe- and that especially put a lot of trust in Keepa for me. Because uh, before then, I'd definitely look at Keepa data, but I would uh, more so side with Selleramp. Um, but the Keepa data was correct. <laughs> like, these sold so quick. It was, it was awesome. That's a good thing. Like, if you use Keepa product finder, it's a great thing to filter by um bsr drops because stuff like that you know it, it uh increases in volume that much um it changes like lover vinyls yeah you'll find those reverse sourcing because there was like 150 people on them at one point but all right other stuff that's that's not so uh obvious is, is super great to find um with filters like that on keepa right and then uh, getting off the final subject and going into uh, maybe some Stanleys, we can talk about um, the pink parades that dropped on Black Friday, right? I believe it was right. Black Friday. Uh, they were the hot pink, uh, obviously, pink parades. Um, they were $45. They sat in stock. They did like the queue system. I think they sat in stock 30, 45 minutes. Um, they got up to recently on Amazon like 250 until everyone got hit with the uh, pricing error. Um, but people sold, uh, at least many people in Giles FBA sold theirs for 200 plus, uh, at $45 buy cost. I still have 18 of them here sitting behind me, um, that I'm just kind of holding on to. Um, and then the mistletoes came out on Cyber Monday, which those didn't perform as well as the pink parades. Pinks always do amazing. Um, but the mistletoes are still selling for $45 buy cost, sell cost, even vibe ish. Still, yeah, I mean, it's still good money. I go yeah. flip, so. Pre- pre-orders on eBay were, like, over 120 a piece. So, right. if you capitalized on that, it was definitely nicer. Yeah, of course, I just sent my pink, pink parades in. Literally, at the price days ago. Yeah. And then got hit with the pricing area. Yeah. FBM was at 250 I wanted to move for 300 and then. Right. Okay. I'm going to remove them. I'm not, I'm not going to settle for. A hundred bucks sale price on those. Right, yeah, that doesn't make sense. Um, also, while we're talking about Pink Stanleys, we cooked uh, flamingos from Target. I know one night, uh, actually a few nights in a row, they're restocking on Target, and members hit hundreds. I know one night I hit 50. Uh, other members hit legit hundreds. Um, and these were buy costs, 45, sell cost, 80 plus all Q4, flying uh, probably... 2,000, 3,000 times a month. So those were another great pink Stanley cook. Um, What other Stanleys? Well, we're on the Stanley topic. Uh, pink uh, Dust. Target ones. Um, Valentine's. Valentine's were beginning of this month, so not technically Q4, but Valentine's right. obviously cooked. Um, those were the red and pink ones. Tell the well. pricing error. Yeah. Um, the uh, Camellia from Dick's. Camellia Gradient. Yep. Pink Dusk Academy. Uh, yep. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure some of these are search suppressed. The Country Golds ended up. Country Golds. I don't have that on the uh, list. Yeah. Somehow I was able to get around that pricing error because um, I never touched my price when we got hit with it. And I should have known not to, but I sold one for 120. Um, No, 140. The low was 120. It was down to like six sellers and I was one of them. And then. I changed my price, and then it got stranded yeah. because it was deactivated. Or, yeah, price error. Um, and then the sizzling pinks went it's not ideal. crazy. I think they sizzling hit 130, right? Yeah, sizzling forgot pink. about those. No. They went uh, crazy. 130. Well, 120, 125. Yeah. And then you have the light green ones from Dix, too. Eucalyptus? The, uh... Yep, it could, those yeah. have been those. Were, have been cooking for us for over like, a year. They were not doing great towards the beginning of Q4, but uh, no, I know I had like I had like thirty in I think, just waiting because they were like fifty three bucks, and then again volume hit like as soon as November hit volume, flew up and I moved for mid sixties. Yeah, December eighth my box hit seventy two dollars. Yeah, not too shabby if you know what to look for. Right. 
stuff that's been um, doing good for you year round is going to do even better in one point five times as Q4. You know? Yeah, if not more. Um, right. I have a story about. I I bought these. Uh, what are they even called? The Spalding back at you ball ball returns or whatever. Basically, it's the orange things that you put on your outside basketball hoop, and whenever you make a shot, it's supposed to come back to you. Anyways, I bought a hundred of those early, early in 2023. I sold probably 40 of them um, for I don't know 30 percent ROI. So I decided to double down. These were only moving a hundred-ish times a month, so I decided to double down. Yeah, this was the I ordered. Uh, oh, okay, yeah, okay, beginning of summer. Was or it end, right? It was the end of summer, was it not? I think it was before that. I th- ah. think it was right before summer. I don't know. E- either it was su- midway. We thought they'd do better, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, I doubled down, bought 200 more. So now I have 300 of them. I already sold 40. And then, like, essentially, uh, sellers go up, price goes down to, like, 40 to 40 bucks. A buy cost was 25-ish. Um, and they're oversized, so essentially like break even at like forty bucks. Um, so I held on to two hundred and fifty of them for six months, um, and I was getting hit with storage fees left and right. I was in the hole probably two thousand um, dollars, and then came like late November, early December, uh, they started picking up on sales, and I sold out, uh, and I actually turned a profit on them uh, because of Q4, which is insane i was selling them for i sold sold most of them for around 55 dollars, and then i probably sold 50 to 75 of them for uh 65 dollars. but yeah i turned the profit on them once i was down over two thousand dollars due to storage fees mm-hmm. which was uh kind of my my comeback story of uh 2023 amazon selling not uh, financial advice <laughs> not financial <laughs> yeah but uh that was like my big l throughout the year Big big L, uh, but um, yeah, that's kind of cool. Coming seeing Q four like turn up, hella sells. So that, that was a fun fun little skew I had. <laughs> I don't know if I had a a big L for the year. Obviously, I needed to get pickier on sourcing, but right now it's January, liquidating stale inventory, break even inventory stuff that's not looking like it's gonna make a comeback right. in the near future trying to get some tax money I set aside um all the returns I'm still I'm still in the hole for the month and we're 19 days in and I've sold like 25k worth of product so it's great it's not going great yeah but not always the or- orange bars are is it Mike <laughs> no it's not it is the orange bars it's just not not profitable orange bars right um I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I'm doing the same thing now. Everything that didn't really sell through Q4, or I say didn't really sell through, where I just have like leftover inventory of X, Y, and Z. I'm obviously pricing competitively. I'm going to get it out, kind of get a refresh for 2024, um, and then kind of just get rolling 2024 and hopefully have a great year with Amazon. Um, I also sold Hoka's, uh, numerous Nike products, uh, some Lulu bags. Um, those are just some, some random stuff I sold. I sold some Nike shoes, some Nike shorts, um, Hoka shoes, uh, like I said, Lulu belt bags, uh, just some of that random stuff that I found. I got good cash back on, uh, that kind of thing. A lot of Target toys did well. Target toys did do well. With, uh, even like I was saying the the Black Friday sales, but, um, the toy section actually performed extremely well, like Hot Wheels, um, the racetracks, Rainbow Roads. Yeah, but I, I have like a, sub one hundred at one point. It was like eighty five bucks. Yeah, so let's talk about the Rainbow Roads a little bit. Um, essentially, they, I, I mean, I've been tracking them all year because we sold them last Q four as well, and they absolutely cooked. Um, not nearly as much though. If I not nearly as much, clear, right? They sold like no, yeah, hundred times. Right, and now um, it's like it was hit one thousand, so something like that in December. Yeah, it was crazy. So essentially, we posted when they came back. Resale was one fifty. Uh, target marked it down to one twelve, and then also five percent uh, red card that uh, gets it down another. I don't know, call it one o four ish, one o five ish. 
Um, I loaded up on them. I got, or loaded up. I bought 25 of them along with, I don't know if it was Rakuten or Top Cash, cash back, 20% Rakuten, yeah. boys. Um, so I, I thought these were going to brick pretty heavy. Um, sell price at the time was 210 ish. And I thought we were going to see it drop down to 150 ish. Cause that's what we sold them for last year for. Um, anyways, tons of people in the group bought them. Um, price dropped to probably 180. Um, I sold all of mine for 200 plus. Um, but then, then again, like a week or two, week or two after they did, uh, some sort of promo. I can't recall the promo. It was, uh, it was 30% um, off with target circle and 10% okay. off stackable. So I remember posting my price dropped down to what? 80 bucks. I think it was 85. It was around 83 before like prep or tax, um, without record. So, yeah. Sub eighty five buy cost sell price was over two hundred. These were these were selling for over a thousand times a month at the time. Uh, whenever year round, these only sell a hundred and one hundred and fifty two hundred times a month. So these absolutely cooked for everyone. And Giles FBA, myself, Michael, um, it was amazing. I know next year I'm gonna instead of buying twenty five, I'm gonna buy two hundred, three hundred, four hundred probably, and just go deep right. on them. Uh, price will probably break then because I buy them all, but, uh, yeah. I wish we knew what, what changed the influx from like last year to this year. Um, I mean, why are they more desirable all of a sudden? I don't know if the, the listing, uh, was search suppressed or something. I don't know, but yeah. hopefully, hopefully with that trend by next year, it'll be three cases. <laughs> That'd be wild. one can hope. Yeah, but uh, definitely we're going to keep our eye, eye out for those, obviously, all year. Uh, they came back on Walmart uh, throughout the year last year as well, so we have that in our monitors, Walmart and Target. Um, I first, but yeah, first lead I bought, or at least one of them, was the $55 Rainbow Road. Oh, yeah, from... Uh, that's what Holly? got me my first... Yeah, that's what got me my first 1,000 sales. That's was when crazy. you posted that, and I bought... 10 total yeah like, oh my god i can't afford this <laughs> yeah that, that was awesome uh these rainbow hot wheels are hopefully gonna continue to cook for years to come uh speaking of or not lego hot wheels they're just uh hot wheel rainbow roads uh but transitioning to legos we cooked a bunch of uh, lego advent calendars uh i personally cooked the star wars uh, they're on Walmart for twenty dollars by cost. Uh, sell hot or sell price was forty five dollars plus. Um, one listing was selling like twenty five thirty thousand times in the past month. Other listing was a newer listing that sold for still seven eight thousand times a month. Um, members were buying them from Walmart and then FBMing same day and making. I don't know, uh, five to six ten dollars profit, yeah, per unit. Was shipping uh, was around six. Uh, net, I think it was like five ninety three or something like that. Uh, yeah. A twenty dollar buy cost. I know one member sold close to a thousand of them, which was kind of insane. Yeah. Um, there's this kid on Twitter who was selling them as well. He sold, uh, I mean, yeah, thousands. The, the trending poly bag picture. Right, yeah. It's like from Jack FBA or something like that. Oh, is that who it was? Something like I that. Forget, I forget I who it was, it but he sold obviously thousands of them. Um, those were just cooking uh, all throughout Q4. Also, there was Harry Potter Advents uh, or some other ones I'm missing. Harry Potter, uh, Star Wars, Star Wars, Marvel, Harry Potter. Okay, I think those. So those were the three, three big ones. Oh, um, yeah. Lego City. Okay. I know. I actually sent. I only got a few of those. I sent them FBA, and they sold for like almost fifty bucks. It was like forty eight ninety nine. Um, they tanked right after December, and I had to move one for like thirty five bucks. But still, those few that I I did capitalize on were nice. Getting into more Legos, uh, Disney Winnie the Pooh was wild for me specifically. Yeah. But everyone in Giles FBA yeah. got, if they were on and they were ready to buy, they at least got 10, I'd say 12 uh, minimum. Right. Some grabbed a um, couple orders of two. Um, then we had um, Jake Greger botting uh, yeah. for the members. So 
most, I'd say, I'd say average got 10 to 15, maybe even 20. Um, you're the outlier there, so. <laughs> yeah, I was able to secure, they did like a Walmart plus early Black Friday sale on these Lego Winnie the Poohs. Um, resale price was 99, hundred bucks, something like that dropped down to 50. They're selling on Amazon at the time for 140 because Amazon wasn't in stock. These are retired now, I believe. Uh, yeah, they were retired. Lego year. people are saying. Um, but yeah, essentially we posted it full send, full send, full send. Uh, we pinged whenever they dropped. I was able to secure 99 of them in one order before they no went out of stock. Uh, <laughs> they did not put a cart limit on it. We thought it'd be two per order. I guess. But um, yeah, I got 99. They shipped. Um, I received them. I've sold probably 70 of them for 125 plus. Um, my buy cost was, I don't know, just shy of $5,000. I believe I had 11 or 12% uh, top cash cash back or Rakuten. It was Rakuten. Um, I got $550 back for Rakuten, which is insane. And all, all said and done, I mean, I should make uh just off the units five thousand dollars profit and then plus five fifty on uh Rakuten so five thousand five hundred and fifty bucks in total off of this one order that legit took me thirty seconds to do. I sent everything to my prep center as probably most of you know. They prep everything, they charge me a flat rate per unit, send it to Amazon and uh yeah I never see the products. Um pretty crazy. That was uh definitely my craziest moment of Q4 was placing that order and then uh having all the yeah. all, all the units ship and uh price obviously price dropped a little bit uh after people obviously got stock uh kind of to like, around like 105 110 yeah and then it, it started to recover uh up to 120 125 130 so um yeah that, that's definitely my highlight of uh 2023 q4 was that one order that I remember made like, me five thousand five hundred dollars. I remember like everyone in their grandmother and Giles FB was like, "Yeah, this is not shipping. You're not getting cash back. Like, uh, this is getting canceled." And then you sent that it was in the prepping phase on Walmart, and we were all just like, "This guy, this guy's so lucky." Yeah, I got very lucky. Uh, very lucky there. I uh, whenever they dropped, I I was on mobile actually. I was on my phone, and I'm just like. Add to cart, add to cart. I'm like, why is it not stopping me? Yeah, I it's just started well. spamming. I just started spamming it, and I got done. It and I'm like, it, okay, stop me. And I just hit like order, and I had all the presets in, and uh, I got the order through. I checked back to Gloop again, sold out. Um, so although I'm the only person I know who got 99, like I got 20, said, yeah, 20 tons of people, technically. tons of people in Giles up yet got 10 plus. Um. And they made fifty dollars plus per unit on it, so and this definitely a be great, great over two hundred by the end of this year. Yes, at least. Um, I know Amazon came back in stock at ninety nine on it right yeah. now, but they normally can't hold stock. But they've been holding stock for probably about a week. Um, once they go out, I mean, sellers. The the trend has been the past month. Sellers are going down a few per day, and price is going up. I don't know twenty five. 50 cents a day uh right. so i've just kind of been pricing high um and selling at the 25 30 dollar mark i know a lot of people are holding these for next q4 um we have a lego guy saying these should be 200 plus by next q4 if not more uh this happens with a lot of retired products i know there's a guy on twitter who only invests in legos and uh he spends 200 300 000 per year on these same That's products insane. we're flipping now uh, i don't know his right? name I believe so. Jim. Um, Jerry. Jerry Lewis. Jerry Lewis, maybe. I, I have think. no clue. I think. Yeah, I see. I love his posts. Yeah, his posts are great. Makes Basically, he makes uh, posts and threads about how he bought this Lego last year for $20 off Walmart, and he bought uh, 500 units of it, and then now uh, this this year they're up to 80 bucks because they're retired and no one right. has stock. And there's still demand for them. So, uh, yeah, Lego investing is definitely interesting. Yeah. I want to so, somewhat get into it uh, in the coming months. Um, very simple yeah. business model overall. I mean, 
buy low, sell high, meet demand when there's no supply. Um, like it's it's what you do with any business, but the margins with Lego and the demand with Lego make it ten, twenty fold what you get investing in, say, like the S and P five hundred. Right. It's absolutely right. insane. Yeah, I know I saw some of those, uh, some of the Legos he's posted recently were some of the ones we flipped to last year, like the Ford Tech, Tech, Technic, Technic, uh, Raptor, yeah. yeah. The Raptor. Bucks. Yeah, we, we bought those last year for 55 bucks and sold them on Amazon for double that, which is great. Like we made tons of profit, right? But he took the, uh, the no, round of, let me hold, let me hold it a year and now they're doing 200 plus and now I'm making triple what. I could have yeah. made if I sold it. 192 back. Buy bucks. So, um, it's definitely an interesting route, and you definitely have to have capital to do it. You can't have $5,000 to your name and think, okay, I'm going to invest in Legos. It's not how that works. You have to build up capital. Um, and instead of putting it in or all your money into, like, let's say the stock market, like Michael was saying, maybe put 100K into Legos and see how that does for you. Um, once again, not financial investing advice. Um, but I just like that guy on Twitter, he does very well with it. He knows what he's doing. He makes over six figures just investing in Legos every year. And same thing with discontinued products. Like, yep. You go in a clearance aisle at Walmart, they're discontinuing a Neutrogena shampoo for $4 a bottle. Six to eight months later, it's selling on Amazon for 40 bucks a bottle. Extremely low risk investment for stuff like that. And it's literally just a waiting game. Uh, th- this is funny because I just saw this right before we started this podcast. Uh, Rally on Twitter, shout out Rally. They're like a uh, investing app where you can invest in collectibles rather than uh, companies. Uh, so for example, you can invest in like dinosaurs, um, sports cards, um, cars, like vintage cars, tons of different stuff. You can get shares of them, and then basically people that want this stuff will come in and make offers, and then you, you basically have like a team vote of if you want to sell it for X. Um, they posted this morning in 2001, an iPod cost 399 and 2023, a sealed iPod sold for 29,000. Um, and then they post in, in 27 and the iPhone costs $499 in 2023, a sealed iPhone sold for 190,000. And then they put in 2024 an Apple vision pro cost $3,499. And then they put like a question mark for okay let's say in two decades what is the apple vision pro sealed going to get going to sell for um there's obviously a market out there for apple like geeks that love sealed products i mean i saw on i was watching golden had golden card collectibles shout out them as well they had a a show on netflix it was a series and essentially i mean golden's just like a auction platform where they auction collectibles uh, and stuff like that. They went into some guy's house who had an entire room full full of Apple collectibles. So he had like one of the first Apple uh, Apple like MacBooks or PCs or whatever it is. But essentially, these things uh, we we're talking about investing in Legos. So this kind of cross references to this. I was almost thinking I wasn't able to get one this morning because my iPhone had to update. Um, but like. If you had four thousand dollars just to put into an Apple Vision Pro and sit it in a safe or storage unit for two decades, I really do think this could be like a ton of money, just like it did with the iPod, right. just like it did with the iPhone, which is crazy. Only eighty k stock. I mean, how many are going to be sealed? Like how many? So. How many iPhones, three Gs? You know, the first model did they make? Yeah, before. Or, I mean, it was probably definitely over 80K. And how many do you see sealed nowadays? The the ratio right. is definitely I mean, there. you have to think about it. With phones, iPods, uh, Oculus goggles, Apple Vision Pros, all people for buy them to use. Yeah, yeah, to use. They're not to sit up on a shelf and just, like, look at. Like, people buy them for use. So sealed products um, <laughs> do hold a, hold value and a demand if it's the right brand, if it's the right product. Um, so that was an interesting thought. Uh, shout out Rally, shout out Will Stern, uh, for bringing that up on my timeline. I thought that was kind of a cool fact. I was actually looking at a, a Lego I bought recently. Um, 
I think you may have too, but it is a twelve ninety nine buy cost. Amazon's been sporadically restocking here and there, and it's still moving for thirty four dollars. Um, it is now retired. It's obviously Amazon is just dumping what leftover stock they have, but it's they're not even taking buy box. Most of the time they restock because it's so in demand right now. It's it's a Valentine's uh, Lego. Oh yeah, and we're up to seven k plus what in the last month now. Seller yeah. shows a thousand, just like the lever vinyls. It's another example of supply and demand. I mean, yeah, this is seasonal. Vinyls aren't, but still. Yeah, that's yeah. that's definitely interesting. Um, Selling for almost thirty five bucks, seventy five percent return. I've bought 150 units right there would be over 1500 profit on a $2,000 purchase. So it's like if I wait a year and it's up to 50 bucks, it's wild. What yeah, and then if you wait another year or another year, it could be up to 75, 100. Right. Um, a lot of these keep on climbing uh, year after year because obviously the demand for the most part is still there. Um, and then, uh, or not the yeah, the demand's there, and basically the supply just can't keep up because obviously they don't produce them anymore. So uh, that's, and I don't know, Lego investing is definitely interesting. Investing collectibles are interesting. Um, all that stuff is an interesting way to, if you have money, you can definitely put it towards things that make you money outside of a, a traditional savings investment. account. Yeah. Or a stock market uh, exchange. Right. I, I kind of tell people, like, I always talk about taking money out of Amazon and investing it to have. But I'm like, why would I throw it into an 8% market when I can have a minimum 20% market um, right. in a two-month turnaround with Amazon rather than a yearly turnaround? I get. I guess the only argument to that would be is, um, do you have a emergency fund if you were to... Um, I don't know. So something happened to you, and you are out out of work for four right. to six months. Are you able to sustain yourself for four to six months without having to sell products or flip products? So it's not a bad idea to put. Um, I mean, I've been watching this the financial audits. Uh, the guy's name's Caleb. Um, basically, it's just he has people on who uh, are in debt, like a ton of money for the most part. Uh, car debt, student loan debt. A lot of them don't have house debt because they don't have houses. Um, but just basically a lot of credit card debt, a lot of student debt. Um, but he talks about building up a emergency fund, um, uh, whether it's a month or six months, preferably six months. Um, what do you need to live for six months? So say your rent is a thousand bucks. Um, that's obviously a thousand bucks a month. That'd be six thousand bucks for rent. Um, say you need four hundred dollars a month for food. It's four hundred times six. Um, and then say you need, uh, I don't know, say you have bills, uh, that aren't covered in the rent. Say that's another $200 a month. So you have a phone bill. So you have car insurance. So you have all this stuff, basically having that amount saved and in a high yield interest account where you can pull wherever at any time, just in case something happens. That's definitely not a ba bad idea. Um, I know with us, we're obviously under 25. We're still on like our parents insurance and stuff like that. But a lot of these people don't have health insurance. So um, I don't know. It's it's definitely not a bad idea if, say, you're living in a house and your house burned down. Um, yeah. I don't know. Just create create some stuff that to, can happen. I need to start emergency fund as well, which is going to be a lot easier after tax season. Right. Um, once I have like what like what I've set aside for that, obviously it can go, um, in a better places. But, um, I mean, entrepreneurship is a lot of risk to reward. Oh yeah. And sometimes that might be not having an emergency fund for six right. months because you're trying to scale, um, reinvest in your business, stuff like that. Right. Yeah. It's scary, but most of the time it's going to work out as long as you know what you're doing and you put your mind to it and hey, you don't, you just don't make dumb decisions. You trust the data, purchase off that, you know. And, and it's definitely different with us being 21 years old rather than being 40 years old with a wife and kids, family of feed, uh, have a mortgage have a have a phone bill have a car payment like all that stuff it's definitely way different now we we like i tell people all the time i could lose every cent i have today and still be ahead of every kid that went to college and is in student loan debt um 
Like I could still be ahead of all of those people financially if I lost everything today. And I still have all that knowledge I've gained right. throughout the throughout the way. Um the the fact of not having debt already puts you ahead. Oh yeah. Miles compared to the majority of the US population. Oh yeah. Which is it's sad. Um I know a lot of people like I I don't want to say a word about people that are working two jobs trying to make ends meet because um you know I've grown up fortunate I've had to worry about my next meal but the people that are just you know going out to spend money to on a on an $80,000 car on a $500 wallet to fit in are the people that are making out most of that debt and I mean okay. consumers trying to fit in with the the rest of the population yeah it's, I mean, it, I don't know. I, I've watched probably 25 of these videos and most of these people are lower IQ, uh, in terms of financial, like financial, like IQ, they they've never been taught. It's usually a repeating cycle of, yeah, my parents are in tons of debt. They live in, a, I mean, I, I grew up in a trailer, like, you know, they just had no structure. Right. And there's no structure coming up in school in terms of finances, right. which is what schools need to be teaching. Need to be teaching uh, uh, credit cards, loans. Um, good debt versus bad debt. Good debt versus, yeah, like finances. Like schools don't teach finances. And that's what people need to know because the cycle just repeats and repeats and repeats. Mm -hmm. And all these people growing up in trailers or low income areas, they, they're more than likely going to repeat that and going to be just like their parents are going to be fifty thousand dollars in debt by age 25 and they don't really know what happened they're getting interest on all their all their they're like i see some of these like credit card interest and it's 25 30 percent interest every month and there's no way these people can dig themselves out of this with the job they have that's paying them three thousand dollars a month or whatever and it's just like it just keeps stacking up just keeps stacking up and like you're toast like it's the best unreal. case scenario there is you take like a, a big credit hit um and pull out a loan to pay off your debt and then because that that four or five percent interest on the loan from the bank is is a hell of a lot better than 25 30 percent credit card debt but most if they're able to get no that. how to do about that yeah exactly assuming your credit's not in the dumps already because of again bad spending habits yeah now 90 percent of these cycle. people on this have a credit probably below 600 if not below 550 um, where they can't, they can't even leverage against themselves. Um, let alone, do they really want to do that when they can't even? They're they're still Uber eat, eating food. They're still going to steakhouses. They're still like right. putting money on cards, using money they don't have. Um, and it's sad to see. And this guy Caleb, he gets so into this stuff. He uh he gets pissed at him. He'll scream like the f word at him and stuff. And, uh, I don't know, it, it's funny. He'll, he'll check his heart rate every now and then. I'll be like 110, 120. Cause he's like so nervous for him. He's like, dude, what are you doing? And I don't know. It's, it's entertaining to watch. And it's, it's sad to see really that people just aren't, aren't informed on how this stuff works, I guess. I mean, I'm still young. I, I still don't know how all this stuff works. I just got my first car loan. I mean, I did. I, I can see how people are just like, okay, yeah, they're giving me money and uh, there's a percent that I have to pay. <laughs> well, I, you know, I always thought, I don't know. Actually, Twitter has been a, a great resource for me. I always thought paying cash for your house was uh, was a smart move. And then I, I kind of realized, you know, looking at people's posts, like if your mortgage rate is, say, 2.5%, which nowadays isn't super reasonable, no. but um, if your mortgage rate's 2.5% and you're paying that monthly why not put that money into a 4.5 percent um, and you make two percent yield savings account yeah exactly yeah and then actually make money make more money rather than paying cash and granted it's it's preference ease of mind first or peace of mind versus you know dragging it on dragging on a mortgage for 30 years but i just saw this thing on tiktok uh i didn't fact check it at all i usually fact check almost everything i see uh my girlfriend gets mad at me because I fact check everything. But um, essentially, uh, it was his daughter asking her dad, how can I pay off my my like mortgage quicker? And uh, essentially, he said what they did is they had a 30-year mortgage, and every year they paid one extra payment. Uh, so 
say their mortgage was a thousand dollars um they paid a thousand dollars a month and at the end of the year they put two thousand down and it took their 30 year mortgage down to 17 years just by just by uh paying one extra payment a year um so i thought that was an interesting not sure if it holds up in the facts uh i found it off tiktok don't believe everything you see on the internet but uh yeah i don't know i just i just thought about that <laughs> yeah i mean that sounds like a checkout based off like normal i mean um like loan terms, I guess, for cars, whatever it may be. A $40,000 car can turn in up 55 grand after five years of payments. But, right. Yeah. Again, off topic, but business world, I mean, life experiences. Right. Um, I don't know. That's, that's about all I got. We covered tons of Q4 products. We kind of went off on a tangent at the end, but. That's obviously fine. We're a we're business podcast. We can talk about loans and collectibles and random stuff as well. So, um, yeah, any final thoughts or words, Big Mike? I don't believe so. I'm just ready to ramp up for 2024. There we go. Um, and like I said in the beginning of the podcast, uh, we'll be back every every other week. Um, I know some of you guys, most of you guys come from Giles FBA to listen. Uh, you can obviously listen on any platform. We're on all platforms. And, uh, yeah, appreciate you guys listening. And have any questions, hit me up on Twitter, Discord. Um, yeah, catch you guys in two weeks.